the first proper, what I would consider proper games console that I ever owned, I got in nine, for Christmas 1983, and it is an Atari well, they called, did they call, yes, they did call it a 2600 by then. That They had called it the Atari VCS, but that was the first version that they called, I think, the Atari 2600. Is the Vader. It came with combat. Which I've always considered a bit rubbish. It wasn't until 1992 when my mum and dad first bought me my first ever... Uh, video games console and that was uh, a Super Nintendo in 92 on the first Christmas it was released here in Europe and uh, this is the very same one that I was I was given and of course it's a little yellowed now uh, due to the plastics uh, that they used to make them. Well my family had a Pong which boyfriend told me was a fake Pong. I think it's called a Pong and it, it has like a little thing that goes up and down and you can do tennis. And I think tennis was a really small little thing. And then I think it was exactly the same game, but it was then called something else. Like it wasn't called tennis, it was then called badminton or it was called hockey or something. And the thing was either like littler or bigger. It's like this exactly the same game. My first console was a Sega Master System. Um, I've got very, very, very fond memories of my Master System playing games like Alex Kidd in Miracle World, Lucky Dime Caper, World Cup Italia 90, um, Land of Illusion, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. My first computer was a Dragon 32 that my dad bought home. Um, he worked for Tandy, did the repairs, so if somebody sent in their old Tandy he would do it. And he had no interest in it at all, like literally none. Well, my first console it was the GX4000, the Amstrad GX4000, because I progressed from the CPC uh, to console in that manner, um, and the console that I wanted was from a system manufacturer that I was comfortable with and I was a fan of. My first console was the Sega Master System, the old version as well, big, long, boxy, but controversially. Didn't have Alex Kid America World built in, no. I had Safari Hunt and Hang On, which meant I had the Light Phaser. My first ever console was a Super Nintendo. Now, back in early 90s, I had come from using, playing on an Amiga 500, I come from playing on a Game Boy, Spectrum, Commodore 64, all these old machines. Um, but the Super Nintendo was my proper first console. My first console was um, an Atari 2600, which I got one year at Christmas. I remember this particular year I got in trouble because this particular year I got up before my mum on Christmas Day and I'd opened all my presents uh, before she even got up. And she went mad at me because I had cartridges, uh, loose cartridges, dotted all over um, the front room. And I remember her saying to me, you know, you shouldn't do that. You don't even know what they are. And I didn't know what they were. I didn't know what a video game was. It was my first video game experience. First ever console. Hmm. Well... Mine was a Sega Mega Drive. Could say I was a little bit late to the game because it was a Sega Mega Drive 2. Uh, but this also meant that I got quite a lot of good games with it. I got Sonic the Hedgehog 1, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Power Rangers. And then I remember getting Sonic the Hedgehog 3 not long afterwards as well. I couldn't afford a lot of games uh, when they came out and uh, I, yeah, I waited for them to lower in price but what I tended to do was rent a lot of video games for the Super Nintendo. I was always in blockbuster video every single weekend renting a video game and bringing it home uh, but I also remember there was this guy and he used to have a video game rental uh, company but instead of you going to a shop he'd come to you in his car he'd pull up on your driveway he'd lift the uh, the boot up he'd have stacks of games in boxes and uh, that's that's how i would how i would rent my games uh, the majority of the time if it wasn't from buttbuster video and uh, i think i still actually got one of his games but he because he never actually came back for it and i think that was the adams family and uh, i actually had I have fond memories of playing that game. It was, it was a good little adventure. So the, this old Welsh computer just goes, <clears throat> you know, um, it has a tape deck separate to it, which we later used to record very bad audio snippets of me and my brother. 
the computer itself came with a few games. Um, it came with The King, which was a Donkey Kong ripoff. Um, Cuthbert in the Jungle, which was a Pitfall ripoff. Uh, Cuthbert in Space, which was um, a little bit odd, actually. Very, very strange. But do you know what? The, the joystick used to have this joystick here. And there was a the clicker there. It was on the base, on the end of the base. And the, the rubber bit wasn't on the clicker. So I used to have imprints for days and days where I was practicing my Donkey Kong jumps. Uh, needless to say, Donkey Kong was a fantastic first game uh, to get into. And loved it very, very much. At some point I played... Alex Kidd in Miracle World so much that it actually glitched. And every time I turned it on, it was an inbuilt one um, in a Sega Master System 2, you know, the grey with the, the slidey thing. And um, whenever you run through the levels, there were purple, little purple, what looked like dead pixels. And whenever you punched the purple dead pixel, you would get uh, bags of money out. Now, I seem to recall, this was just empty space in the level where there'd be a purple block. Punch it, get the coins out. I seem to remember going around to a friend's house and memorizing where some of the purple blocks were and punching the exact same squares throughout the game and getting money. Now, looking or thinking back on it, it sounds like utter bull that I might have made up. However, there is a, a part of me that actually says, no, that did actually happen. Good console. Still have it, covered in Sonic the Comic stickers and some from Five Alive, which is a fruit drink that only people my age will remember. Still works perfectly as well. I also have a second Master System in my kitchen. Why? Because I wanted it. What, you want to fight about it? I got a lot of stick uh, from uh, schoolmates, of course, uh, who had their um, Amigas, Master systems, a lot of master systems, a lot of a lot of my friends had master systems, and several Ataris, 2600s. Um, but mostly it was the the kids, the the, the well-off kids, that seemed to be a little bit more well-off anyway, and they had Mega Drives, which were brand new, or well, some some of them even had imported Mega Drives, and they would rip the piss out of me completely, uh, and deservedly so in a way. I remember playing Dig Dug to death. Um, always remember playing Dig Dug. Um, I. I had loads of other cartridges, and it, honestly, I cannot remember what they were. The memories I have of that console, me and my brother play Sonic the Hedgehog 3, get into Carnival Night Zone, and get into the first, I think it's like the first stage boss, where it's got that little spinning, like spinning top thing that just moves around and destroys all those blocks that you're on. We used to do this thing where we'd try and stay alive for as long as possible and see how many blocks we could have left at the end of it while still managing to kill the boss as well. I have really, really fond memories of the Super Nintendo and, and some of those memories included staying up late at night, playing Zelda, playing Mario World, playing all these amazing games. But one of the things that particularly stands out for me and actually came up in conversation uh, just a couple of weeks ago with my brother was how did we manage to get the money together back in those days because we were pretty skin to import Street Fighter 2 for the Super Nintendo now what we did is we bought I don't know if you remember this we bought a honeybee which was a converter to be able to play NTSC games on your pal SNES that cost a fortune in itself but then we had to go and get Street Fighter 2 imported from the States I remember very, very clearly buying the Honey Bee, buying the copy of Street Fighter, the US version, and getting it posted from the States. So that must have cost us a fortune, and I'm, I dread to think what we had to do for, to grab that money together. We probably literally sold everything we had to get Street Fighter 2. And I remember my brother and I playing on it. Um... But I remember it was at the point where my family had stopped playing on it and we like found it. We were like, this is so cool. So I have I have fond memories of my brother and I just just having fun, mucking around with a 
Fake Pong. Pong clone. Pong clone. It was a Pong clone. <laughs> I can't even get the fake name right. <laughs> I don't understand when people are saying, oh yes, top top Atari games, you know, classic Atari games, they include combat, and I don't know why, because I think it's rubbish. Especially the planes, though. You, plane one going along, plane two going along, you, you just can't... You could keep going in the same direction, they both go the same speed, and unless one of you turns around, no one's ever going to shoot anyone or kill anyone, and invariably the one who turns around is the one who dies. Switching on burning rubber. For the first time and thinking that's an Amstrad doing that I mean no no we've never seen the Amstrad do graphics like that and the, and at the time it felt fast and fresh and, and now looking back on it yeah it's a sluggish game really but at the time it was mind-blowing and when Robocop 2 came out the graphics on Robocop 2 were just unbelievable and I thought well I'm, I'm, this is this if, if more games come out like this and have this style of pre this level of presentation then the the, the Dukes for Thousand would have been a winner, but uh, unfortunately that wasn't the case. So I remember my sister uh, helping me out to buy the Super Scope. Um, I think it was it was like about a hundred pounds or something like that, and I always remember giving me an extra twenty quid <laughs> to add on top, and uh, so I could buy it. Um, and we had great fun with that. I always remember my friends would come over. I even had a party one weekend. We were going to watch um, the last of the Mohicans, but instead of doing that, everyone was just playing on the Super Scope. <laughs>